Hey guys, it's Nate from The Bike Company. Want to touch on some ways to improve your small bump compliance as you increase compression settings or ramp rate from volume spacers to get more support out of your suspension as your ground speeds increase. So the basis of this, as your ground speeds increase, as you're riding more aggressively and faster, you're going to need more support out of your suspension. And you're going to get that through compression settings, through ramp rate, and maybe a little bit through sag, but that's relatively minor overall, you, you know, maybe a 5% change in sag rate. I'm going to show you guys a couple quick videos just so you can get an idea of that extra front end compression. And you can see here I just bounce straight across these rocks. And that's, you know, that's my favorite line, one because it's fun and I think it's probably a quicker line through there. But if my fork was soft, what you would see is that front end bury in and you wouldn't see it come up and over so much as trying to stall that front wheel and send me on a, on a lawn dart. When you get the increased compression or the increased ramp rate for the more support, you're gonna give up a little bit of small bump compliance and you're gonna get a little bit more feet, trail feedback into your hands. We've got a blog that goes through a, a lot of this in a little bit more depth if this is interesting to you, but the quick version of this, places to look to improve your small bump compliance. Got them all right here, or a lot of them right here. Uh, tires are a big one. Sidewall technology has come a long way. The more aggressive sidewall technology that you're gonna run, the more small bump compliance you're gonna gain back. That's because rubber's got a unique ability to be both a spring and a damper. So a lot of the newer tires, while they might have a little bit more mass, they're actually giving you the ability to run a lower PSI because of the support. And then they're slightly dampening their own com compliance, uh, which gives you, again, an increase in the small bump compliance as your suspension is, is getting stiffer. You can also look at tire inserts. I don't have one of those here today, but one of the things that I think is hard to define on tire inserts, I've run them for a couple years now. You've got, it's essentially a volume spacer for the tire, so that's pretty easy. The tire's gonna ramp faster, the same as your suspension would, so it goes more quickly to be able to do a supportive PSI. Basically your tire's an air spring. So it has to ramp up to where it's gonna catch you in that position. And with the volume spacer, it will ramp quicker as it compresses. So it will give you a little bit more support. Something that is interesting on the Kush cores in particular, things that contact the side of the tire, they actually will improve the stiffness of the tire too by cutting the leverage ratio. So if you think about, if I had a ruler and I was waving a ruler, it would wave pretty big frequency. And if I grabbed it halfway and I waved it, it's gonna wave much less. Similar concept, the Kush core touches the side of the tire and that gives it more support or less leverage ratio to build up on. Really tires are gonna be a major factor in finding that additional small bump compliance. There's a couple other things though that are really worth looking at. Brakes and braking technique. We've all seen it. The person who's kind of tepid going into that terrain grabs a handful of brake, stabs that front end down, steepens the head tube, sits the bike deep in the travel so it's going to be more rough anyway, and then tries to go through the terrain. And it went from being moderately hard to super difficult because you've gone from your sag percentage, which is going to be a nice compliant piece of suspension, you break hit the brakes, brakes dives into the deeper suspension where it's got more PSI pushing back, it's gonna be faster acting and it's gonna be more harsh across that stuff. When you have powerful brakes and you know where to use them, you're not gonna roll into terrain like that. So, you know, I run four piston brakes on everything. I'm a bigger guy, it makes a lot of sense. I really, I don't see anything other than just a straight XC race bike, really maybe if you're only barely getting into the trail but if you're riding trail enduro or bigger the four piston brakes you don't give up enough weight to justify the, the, the drop in performance these are going to be more powerful they're going to get that power on confidently for you you can slow down sooner let off the brakes the bike will reset to its its natural rake you get the head tube back you get that additional suspension 
Most importantly, you're going to get that compliant suspension back, and then you go through the terrain. So brakes, believe it or not, make a big deal in how your bike's handling you know, what would seem to be suspension, uh, really the technique and the brakes combined. Finally, in this video, we're going to touch on cockpits. You got a couple things here that can help you with small bump compliance. Handlebars. This is the one-up handlebar, carbon bar. It's got a very unique shape to it, and this is really what carbon fiber is about in our world. It's about being able to build designed shapes that are very complex and would be hard to do in another material. And this design is designed to give you some small bump compliance. You can see here, and if you can't, we'll drop a video or a photo on top of the video, but where it radius is kind of standard in the front, on the back it flares down. And again, that's designed to give you a little teeny bit. It's nothing you're going to notice. You're not going to be able to push on this bar and say, oh yeah, I feel it. But over a day of your hands being rattled, this is going to be slightly more small bump compliance. It's going to put less of the trail feedback back into your hands. So again, one up carbon bar, probably the most popular bar on the market right now for us because of that, taking advantage of those designs. Some other things on bars. How far are you gonna cut your bars? The reality is we don't all need to be running 800 and 820 millimeter bars. Uh, I'm six foot one, I've got, my arms I think are two inches longer than I am tall. So I've got long arms, long legs. I run 785s and you know that 785 gives me a nice power position when I start going into 800s and 810s, I feel like I'm giving up. The leverage is great. You, you're not going to be able to pull the wheel out of my hand, but I give up the ability. If I dive into a corner and it's not quite right, I'm out of that power position and it's hard to maybe adjust with minute adjustments versus getting just a little bit in. Think of it like a push-up. You get just a little bit into that sweet spot and all of a sudden everything's really, really natural. So how far are you going to cut your bars? The reason that matters so much if you're cutting a bunch off your bars, if you're you know riding a medium or a small, don't buy the stiffest bar you can find and try to cut it down. You're gonna change the leverage ratio drastically and you're gonna make a way stiffer bar. So if you're cutting down notably, look at narrower bars to start or make sure that you're looking at bars that aren't you know DH stiff or whatever. Uh, you don't need to cut a DH stiff bar down, take out even more of that leverage and rattle your teeth out. So another place to make sure that you're paying attention. Grips. We have some clients who run those rotating grips. Personally, I'm not a fan. I don't like the idea of anything else moving uh, underneath me. And I don't like the idea of another moving part. I know they're pretty robust. I haven't seen any with problems. It's just not what I'm into. For me, I let the bar kind of rattle. You don't death grip a bar when you ride mountain bikes. But when I do want to grab it really firm that like big eye moment oh shit here we go um i want to grab the bar and have the bar there i just don't want that extra little bit of give so grips and how you grip makes a big difference so make sure that you're getting a grip that is appropriate for your hand size and make sure you're not just locking down on that another technique as long as we're on cockpits have your brakes set up where your hand is neutral a lot of people set their brakes up when they're riding the bike, test riding it in the parking lot. So their brakes end up, you know, you're comfortably sitting up and your brakes, yeah, that's great. But when you go to descend and you've gotten down lower and further back, all of a sudden you're having to reach like this to grab your brake. And that's tremendously stressful on your joints. It's no good. So setup, technique, how wide are you cutting your bars and, you know, how stiff are your bars to start out with? All those things are going to add up and give you a little bit more small bump compliance. Again, there's an accompanying blog with this, so if you want to learn a little bit more and see some of our favorite products for that stuff, check it out on bikeco.com, and we look forward to seeing you guys on the trails.